In this video, I'm going to answer your questions about margin. How does it work? When should you use it? When should you avoid it? And what would happen in a 30% market crash if you were using margin? And at the end of this video, I will also share with you the lessons I've learned by using margin over my years of trading options. Hello everyone, welcome back to My Life of Learning. My name is Randy Perez. Please know that I am not a financial advisor. This video is for educational purposes only. It's not meant to be investment advice of any kind. I am, however, a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. Before we get started, I just ask one thing of you. Please hit the like button to support this channel. I'm about to give you some really awesome information that I know you're going to find great benefit in. So if you appreciate the kind of information I provide for you on this channel, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. Thank you for that. Let's get started. First, I want to thank all of you who have taken the poll I put out a couple of days ago to figure out how much margin all of you are using. As you can see here, there's a wide assortment of margin usage. Notice up top that 54% of you said that you don't use any margin at all. And the remaining 46% range from using a small amount of margin to 9% of you honestly said that you stay maxed out with your margin usage. Margin is one of those things that it can be difficult to understand. I'm speaking not only because of the comments that you share with me here, but also from my own personal experience in trading stocks and options over the years. Margin usage, how far to push it, whether you should use it at all, and whether it's good or bad is a very common topic with option traders. Over the years that I've been trading options, at times I've used margin in a big way, but now I either don't use it at all, or if I do, it's for a very small percentage of my account and for a very short period of time. I'm going to share with you what I know about margin to hopefully help you make better option trading decisions. First and briefly, what is margin? There are really two types of margin. There's margin in which you can use some of the broker's money on loan to buy stocks. And typically this kind of margin requires that you have around 50% of the value of the stock available, which could be in the form of cash or the value of some other asset that's in your account. Then you can borrow the other 50% from the broker to buy more shares of stock. And then there's the type of margin that I want to talk about in this video. That's the margin requirement for us option traders when we sell options. Of course, the reason that many option traders like to use margin is because it can drastically increase your purchasing power and allow you to use someone else's money to trade a larger position size than you'd be able to if you're just trading in a cash account. Here you see a snapshot of my main option trading account. Up top in the blue box, you see the net liquidation value of this account. If all positions were closed out, so this account was switched to a 100% cash account, it would have about $450,161 in it. In the purple rectangle, you see that we only have cash available in the amount of $276,593. The rest of the account value is in stocks that have been assigned to us because of put options that we have sold. Here you see the seven stocks that were assigned to us, which we have turned into covered call positions. Going back to our account summary, notice in the orange rectangle that the current maintenance margin requirement is just over $141,000. But the main reason I want to show you this snapshot is what's in the red rectangle rectangle at the very bottom. Notice that although I only have $276,000 cash and an account value of $450,000, because of the type of portfolio margin we have, Interactive Brokers is saying that I have over $1.9 million in buying power because of margin. This is why some options like to use margin. Please know that I do not use margin anymore, or if I do, it's a very small amount for a very short period of time. We do have a lot of positions in this account. If they were all assigned to us, they would be in excess of the $450,000 liquidation value of this account. The reason for that is because I don't like keeping all my cash at one brokerage. I like to spread it around just in case one decided to say go belly up or maybe deny us access to our capital. So we keep the rest of this cash that has been set aside this position in other brokerage accounts. But still, after all these years of trading stocks and options, it still amazes me the amount of margin that a broker will allow you to use. Honestly, it scares me a little bit. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I promote not using margin. And I know that it can be challenging, especially when you're first starting out and you have a smaller account. The reason why I promote not using margin is I want all of you to be able to keep playing the game along with us. Sure, some spectator games are fun, but trading in stocks and options to me is really only fun if we get to do it. That's why I promote not using margin on this channel because I know that if you don't use margin and you make fundamentally sound decisions, you will most likely be able to keep playing this fun and profitable game along with us. And that applies to me as well. I would love to be trading over $2 million in positions, but I know that it would be a bad decision for me to do that with my current account size. I might make ridiculously good money right now, but the next time the market crashes like it did in March of 2020, I could be wiped out and wouldn't be able to play this game along with you. I don't want that for me or for you. 
It's one thing to say that we want to keep playing this game after the next market crash, but it's another thing to understand how margin works so that if you decide to use it, you know the proper way to use it. Let's look at a couple examples of margin usage and talk through what happens if a stock moved against you. I know a lot of you like to trade in Tesla stock. In fact, our last video was about trading options in Tesla. So let's just stay with Tesla and discuss a few margin scenarios using options in Tesla. How much margin will be required for to sell a naked, out of the money, 635 put option in Tesla? Right now, it's the weekend, so there's no price movement. The last price, as you can see here for Tesla, was Friday when the market closed and it was $656.95. Let's say that we felt bullish on Tesla. As such, we wanted to sell an out of the money $635 put option that expires in 40 days on August 20th. As you can see here on the far right, in the blue box, if we went in the middle of the bid and ask, we would expect to be able to sell this option for around $38.52. But the question is how much margin will E-Trade make us set aside this naked put option? Remember, if Tesla's assigned to us at this price, it will cost us $63,500 to buy 100 shares of it. How much margin will we need to set aside for this trade? Here you see the impact that this order would have on our account. There's several things I want to point out here that I think are really important. First of all, to answer our question, notice in the blue box at the red numbers in the middle column labeled change in account balance, notice that by placing this order, E-Trade says we will need $24,148.65 in margin available. So we're able to do this for about 38% of what it would cost us if the position were put into our account. However, if you follow the blue arrow down to the bottom, notice what the red box says. And let me tell you, this is important because last year in March, when the market had that big drop and things got volatile, all brokerages I know of did this exact same thing mentioned here in the fine print. It says, please note that E-Trade Securities reserves the right to increase the margin requirement at any moment without prior notice. I know all of you are intelligent people, so you know exactly what that means. Just because when you place this order, E-Trade says that the margin requirement is a little over 24,000, you need to know that they have the right and the ability to change that to whatever they want at any moment without giving you even a moment's notice. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel a little bit uneasy, especially if I had a maxed out margin account. And according to the poll that you guys took, 9% of you are maxed out in your margin usage right now. But let me go ahead and give you a heads up. As you're going to see, it's not just those of you that have maxed out your margin that need to really understand how it works. It's important if you're using any margin at all that you need to understand it. So let's say that the following scenario played out. Let's say the overall market became very volatile and Tesla dropped in price, then it came right back up to where it is right now at 656. Technically, the margin requirement should still be the same, right? But E-Trade is telling us here that it reserves the right to increase that margin to whatever they want just because volatility increased or because they begin to feel uneasy about the potential for Tesla to have a big drop. One of the questions you guys have asked me is, what would happen in a 30% crash if you were shorting put options. So let's just run through that scenario here with Tesla. Right now, Tesla's trading at almost $657. But let's say that it has just dropped 30% from $938 to the $657 price area. That means that we'd be selling put options in Tesla when it was trading right at $938. Let's say that we had sold a put option that was the same distance out of the money as the one that we just talked through. And we sold the put options that were 3.3% out of the money, we would have sold the 910 put option. How much would the margin requirement be for that option if Tesla dropped 30% from 938 down to where it's at now? Please notice what I did here in the blue box. In this scenario, since we're saying that we sold a put option that was higher in strike price, I've actually increased the amount of money that we would have got paid for selling that put option. Notice under price, the scenario I put in here was that we were paid $50 per share as compared to the $38.52 in the earlier scenario. But since Tesla has dropped by approximately 30%, notice in the red rectangle how much the margin requirement has increased by. It went from a little bit over $24,000 to almost double, a little over $46,700. So let's just run this potential scenario. Let's say you have a $100,000 account and you're at 50% margin. If you were only trading in Tesla and it dropped by 30%, you are right at the cusp of a margin call because the margin requirement pretty much doubled. So you went from 50% margin usage to 100% margin usage. Let me tell you from personal experience, that is not a fun spot to be in. 
And keep in mind that little sentence at the very bottom here in the fine print that E-Trade has the right to increase the margin requirement at any time that they please. It's not that they're trying to put you out of business to be mean to you. They're just trying to protect themselves as well as the traders that bought that put option from us. They want to make sure that we have enough cash to cover the scenario in which the stock needed to be put into our account or at worst, the scenario in which we were forced to buy to close that put option. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I would love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. Now, there are actually two types of margin for us option traders. There's the type that we've been looking at, regulation T margin, and then there's the type of margin called portfolio margin. Last time I checked, portfolio margin became available to a trader on interactive brokers once their account size reached $100,000 and had to stay over that amount in order for it to remain under portfolio margin. The difference is that instead of looking at each position's margin requirement, portfolio margin looks at your overall portfolio. As a result, with portfolio margin, you're actually able to trade with even more leverage. Let me show you what I mean. I'm switching over from an E-Trade account whose value is under $100,000 over to our Interactive Brokers account which is under portfolio margin and its value is over $100,000. I'm putting in everything exactly the same for that Tesla trade. As you can see in the purple rectangle up top, we're selling the August 20th 635 put option in Tesla. In the blue box, you see that we put in that same limit price of $38.52. Please follow the red arrow down to the bottom right and look in the red rectangle. There you'll see that for this exact same position, because we're using portfolio margin, Interactive Brokers is only making us set aside $12,863 for our margin requirement. One of the reasons for that is because as you can see here, we have a very diverse portfolio made up of covered call and naked put options. So Interactive Brokers calculates how much they want to set aside for margin for the same Tesla trade because of our fairly conservative and diverse portfolio requirements about half of what it was in the regular margin account. But what would happen if Tesla crashed by that same 30% in this account with portfolio margin, here you see that we put in all the exact same information as we did on the E-Trade platform. We're selling the August 9-10 put option because we're trying to simulate a 30% drop in Tesla. So under the purple box, you see that we are saying that we got $50 for that put option. If you follow the red arrow down to the red box, notice that the March requirement has now jumped up to just over $24,000. Again, it's almost double. Yes, it's about half of what it was in the E-Trade account because our Interactive Brokers account has portfolio margin, but notice that it has still almost doubled. Also, notice that there's no mention here of Interactive Brokers being able to increase margin whenever and by however much they want to. But take my word for it, they can, will, and have done that. As a matter of fact, in March of 2020, when the market was crashing, I was nonstop getting messages that they were increasing margin requirements for various positions. So we talked through a scenario here in Tesla where it experienced a 30% price drop. But what if we were playing the entire market? What is the margin requirement of the S&P 500 ETF, whose ticker symbol is SPY? And what would the margin requirement be if the overall market dropped by 30%? Let me show you. Here you see that SPY is currently trading at 4.35 and 52 cents. Now I want to make sure that we are comparing apples to apples. So as you can see here in the blue box, I did the same thing that we initially did with Tesla. We sold the put option that was 3.3% out of the money. For that, it looks like we would receive around $3.73 per share. Notice down the red rectangle that the margin maintenance requirement for 100 shares of this option or one contract worth will be $7,152.85. What's interesting about this is that E-Trade is only requiring us to set aside a little bit over 17% of what this position would cost us if it was put into our account. Remember that with Tesla, that same put option that was 3.3% out of the money, they're requiring us to set aside 38% of what that position would cost us if it was put into our account. The reason is because Tesla is a lot more volatile than the overall S&P 500. So brokers tend to demand a lower margin requirement percentage for a lower volatility position than for a higher volatility one. But what would happen to our margin requirement if the S&P 500 dropped by 30%? Let's play out the same scenarios we do with Tesla. If the S&P 500 was trading at 622 today and it dropped 30%, They'd be right about where it's at now, $435. Unfortunately, when I looked at the available strike prices, the put option of 3.3% out of the money if SPY were trading at 620 wasn't available. So I had to go with the highest one available for that same August 20th expiration date, which was 575. Let's see what would happen if SPY dropped from 622 down to 435 and we had sold that 575 August 20th put option. Let's say that as you see in the blue rectangle, we have been able to sell that put option for about $4.85 per share since the strike price was higher. Notice down the red rectangle on the far right 
that the new margin maintenance requirement would be over $22,000. So it pretty much tripled in the scenario where the S&P dropped by 30%. If you had a maxed out margin account, you were using every bit of your margin. If the S&P 500 dropped by 30%, you would absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt have a margin call because your margin just tripled. If you had only been using a third of your available margin and the S&P dropped by 30%, you would be right at the verge of a margin call. If we're in the same scenario in our account that has portfolio margin, the margin doesn't triple, but it does go up by almost 10%. From as you can see here in the red box at $3,937 up to, if the market experienced a 30% decline, the portfolio margin requirement would go up to $4,312 per contract. So not nearly as much as the increase in our regular margin, but still an increase. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I would share with you the lessons I've learned about using margin. There have only been a couple times in my option trading career in which I hated what I was doing. Every single one of those times happened because I was using too much margin. I mean, it absolutely ruined a month of my life every single time when the market crashed or a big position moved against me and I had a margin call. I was so stressed out and most of those times I ended up taking a huge financial loss and hit because I had to liquidate positions at the worst possible time. That's why on this channel and in my trading account now, I strongly promote not using margin. Or if you do use it, use only a very small percentage. Because as you can see, when a stock or the overall market goes against you, the margin requirement can go through the roof. And it's not even taken into consideration the very real possibility that your broker will most likely increase your margin requirement to whatever makes them feel comfortable in a highly volatile environment. If you decide to use margin, please make sure that you position yourself so that you'll be able to keep playing this game with us forever. If you'd like to receive alerts as soon as we make trades similar to the trades you saw in my option portfolio, consider the benefits of becoming a patron at the link down in the description below. If you'd like more information on how to use selling put options to generate awesome cash flow in return, check out the video series in the link above in the description below entitled Selling Put Options Explained with Real Life Examples. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.